Well, it's Wednesday evening. Guinness time. It's been a long, hard day at work in the office from home today. I'm buggered. I sit down in front of the computer about eight o'clock, before eight o'clock, and you work all the way until quarter past five, and by the time you're finished, your eyes are buggered and you're fucked. And it's hot and it's very humid, especially here in Sydney at the moment. And this just goes down a treat. I think this must be my third one. Wow, amazing, huh? Yeah, so here we are with a Guinness on a uh, Wednesday evening, the 24th tomorrow. Today, 24th today and the 25th tomorrow, my daughter's birthday tomorrow. And she jets off to the US uh, on Friday for a fortnight's holiday. Um, I mean, she's a law student, so she's not stupid. But why would you go to the US? I cannot fathom that for the life of me. But hopefully it's, a, it's an experience from which she learns something, as all things should be for young people. It's funny, when I was a young person many, many, many years ago, uh, life was so different. I was, uh, I was born in uh, Cambridge in England, uh, uh, three days before the Beatles' first single, Love Me Do, was released. Uh, October the 1st, I share a birthday not necessarily the same year with singers or the singer Yasuna Dor, um, with the US president Jimmy Carter, and there's a few other quite well known people too that were born first uh, of October. I was born in Cambridge. My father uh, went to a school um, where the uh, principal was Olivia Newton John's uh, father. I don't know what he's first name was, John, Newton John or something like that. Grew up in uh, Cambridge as a young wee boy, uh, which was the, uh, the home of uh, Cambridge University, Isaac Newton and all these uh, famous, uh, other famous institutions, of course. My parents were of a roving disposition. So after a couple of years in Cambridge, they took us up to Nottingham, where we lived in a small village called Bingham. And uh, it's there, I guess, I really started to make the connection with nature. Um, spent lots of time. Uh, in, in Around Bingham, they had the, an old railway line. And um, back then, as is the case in many places, the, the, railway, the, the railway line was here, and then you had the banks either side. Um, and it would just go for miles and miles and miles through the countryside. And when they ripped the old lines out, they left this perfect wilderness that you could walk through, uh, this corridor of uh, wildlife. And I spent many, 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 many hours uh, as a kid uh, walking through these, uh, these corridors and seeing cowslips and rabbits and, and all manner of wildlife. Loved it. And we lived there for a couple of years. And then we picked up sticks again and my parents, we went on holiday to Scotland. Um, and my parents loved it so much that eventually they moved the whole family up to a, a village called Glenfarg, which is a small, very small village on the border of Kinrosshire and Perthshire. Uh, and I went to a small, school, uh, the walls of which were sand, uh, not sandstone, they were granite. It was a Victorian era school, um, had three teachers, 72 pupils, uh, absolutely fantastic place, but very, very cold in winter. Um, I used to slide all the way, the one, the one and a half miles to school, I used to slide on a biscuit tin lid in the snow walk home again at night always wearing gloves on your hand freezing cold um, but very healthy a healthy cold you know 
I love the place. Absolutely love the place. Um, you know, once you cross the border from England to Scotland, it's Great Britain, it's the United Kingdom, but they're two different countries, two distinct countries. And as soon as you cross that border, there's a difference. Um, it's hard to define. So we lived in, uh, in, in the, out in the country in a stone cottage uh, with two dogs, uh, three cats, a goat, chickens, ducks. Uh, loved it, absolutely loved it. So many memories and so many adventures that I had there. And we lived there uh, until early 74. And then one day, uh, me and my sister get told, oh, we're going somewhere different. We're going to New Zealand. And so in April 1974, we arrived in uh, Wanganui in the North Island of, uh, of New Zealand. Very hot climate, very interesting. And I immediately found it very difficult to transition. Um, you know, uh, I had a very tough and rocky uh, first year there. And mainly because, you know, kids are, can be cruel. And I was here, here I was this little white bloke, probably with, probably with a little Scottish accent, but definitely pommy. And I used to get, I used to get abused um, by the kids in my class, uh, abused by the teacher. Had a very rough, rough road um, in my first year uh, in New Zealand. But I loved New Zealand. And in 75, my grandfather died, um, cunt that he was. And so my parents decided that we would go back uh, to England and pick up sticks again there. So, I mean, my father, I guess, wanted to look after his mother. So they sold everything and we went back to New, back to England, um, stayed there maybe three weeks and then went back to New Zealand again. So here I am back in, uh, here I am again back in New, New Zealand. Uh, a different school, uh, they have an intermediate school there, so you've got the primary school, then you don't just go to high school from primary, you go an intermediate school for two years. So I was in the intermediate school and I started to knuckle down a bit. I started to, started to find my, started to, I mean, here I am being un, uprooted all the time. Hard to find, form relationships, hard to settle down. I've known this all my life, you know? And, uh, and I come back and suddenly I'm going to a different school, a high school, and I had to go through the same process again, that adjustment. And the first, my first year at high school was, was a difficult one for me again. And then I found um, science and I found that I had, a, I, had a, I had a thing for science. I was, you know, especially chemistry. And I started to knuckle down and suddenly I'm starting to generate some really good, good school results, you know. And chemistry, and as I went through the years, chemistry became you know, I was third, third in, in the school in chemistry, first in my class, third in the school in chemistry. And I look set for, wow, you know, something big. And then 1978, uh, the, the, the Bee Gees era, the disco era, what happens again? We're going from Wanganui, we're going to Gisborne on the East Coast, a shithole called Gisborne. So 1979, I started off in Gisborne uh, the shortest, second shortest river in the world, the first city in the, in the, uh, in the world to see at the sun each day and probably one of the few um, railway services, railway lines that, where you, the train has to give way to the plains. Uh, it's a weird configuration. So I went to school there and that was my last year at high school, 1979. And I decided, fuck it, I've had a gut full of school, it's time to get out in the big world. So I quit. Uh, school and got my first job uh, in a furniture shop. I actually did very well at high school. I got my uh, university entrance um, examination certificate 
accredited to me so I didn't have to sit the exam. I'd done sufficiently well during the year. I had my school certificates in chemistry, biology. I, I was the most qualified in my family academically at that time. And here I am, I left school. I went to a furniture shop paying $64 a week. And that's where I'm gonna leave it now. Cause I'm gonna drink some more of my Guinness. So you're gonna to have to wait until maybe tomorrow to hear more of my great story. My life story in a nutshell. And I love this little selfie stick I've got too, because it's got a little tiny light on the top. And not many of them seem to have that, but it throws sufficient light to probably properly expose um, for the, the video. All right, I'm off. If you've got a Guinness, enjoy it. If you've got any other beer, enjoy it. I'm off to turn the fan on and try and cool down because it's bloody hot. So if you're interested in my life story, the truncated, edited life story, join, in for you, join me for part two, maybe tomorrow. Okay, folks, have a good one. Bye.